Hi, this is Dave Wolber from University of San Francisco. I'm going to show you part two of No Text While Biking, um, an App Inventor app. And in part one, we set up a user interface that you could stick in a custom response. And essentially, anytime a text came into your phone, it would respond with whatever that custom response was. So you can change the response to say, you know, I'm biking right now, I'm driving, whatever you want to say. You can you can say it. Um, one issue with this app right now is if you close the app and relaunch it, whatever the user has typed in this box, the custom response is going to be gone, and this default one will come back. So let's let's set it up so there's uh, so that custom response is saved persistently, uh, meaning in a in a database. Um, so it'll be there every time you launch the app. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is you need to have a tiny DB component. And I added that in part one, but essentially it's in the basic component palette and you just drag it into the non-visible component area and, and you've got your tiny da database component. And this guy can store things persistently. So back over in the um, blocks editor, um, we're gonna you know have our program um, actually store the um, the data persistently. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab from my blocks, we set up a button called change response button. And I'm going to grab the click event. Okay. And on that click event, we want to store our, our data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's grab tinyDB in the store value block. And what store value does is you can tag it and that kind of identifies the data and then you can actually give it the data you want to store. So in this case, I'm going to just tag the data as the custom response. Uh, it could be anything. The main thing is I'm going to use this when I actually go retrieve the data. So when I click that button, I'm going to tag some data with custom response. And what I want to put in there is, is whatever is in the response text box, because that's what the users has typed something in there. So I'm going to grab response text box dot text. And so now that data will be stored persistently in the database um, every time the user you know, clicks on that change response button. So that's, that gets us one place. Now that, you know, if you want the data to get loaded into the app um, every time you uh, start the app, there's a special event called screen1.initialize. And really screen1.initialize is the is the launch app event. And so every time you run the app, it's going to get called. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to go get the value. Um, we want to get this same value. So I'm going to do command C, command V, and, and cop, basically copy paste that um, block. So con command C will copy it and then click on the window and command V. So that's the tag I want to use. And really what I want to do is stick that stuff into the response text box. So I'll grab response text box and set it to that call to get value. Now this is not exactly right and I'll show you how to fix it, but just to start, when the app opens, let's stick whatever was in the database into that response text box. That way when a text is received, we will use that data to respond. Okay, the problem is the first time you run this app, there's nothing in the database, and you're going to blank out your even the default response. Um, so we actually need to do a little question here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new variable. And I'm going to call that variable the custom response. And we can start it off as anything. It doesn't really matter. We'll just set it to text. And once you define a variable, it's, it's kind of a memory cell, a name memory cell, you can go grab it. So I'm going to say, let's set the custom response, and it's going to get set to the call to tinyDB. And um, what we're going to want to do is only if that custom res response is not empty, do we want to set this response text box. And in the next part, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to finish this. So in the next part, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you how to use an if statement um, to only use that response if it's not empty. Thank you very much, and look for part three.